Good morning, everyone. I've been asked to make a brief announcement before I start. Um, you received with your packets the latest edition of the Journal of Law and Social Change here at the school. And if you're interested in submitting for future um, editions, just ask anyone with the name tag, and we'll be happy to talk with you about the process, and we hope that you enjoy it, and we congratulate the journal on this accomplishment, and we really appreciate that collaboration. So welcome. On behalf of the Toll Public Interest Center and the conference organizers, welcome to today's event. We want to thank all of our panelists, the support of Penn Law, the Journal of Law and Social Change, and all of you who have contributed to this symposium. As we all seek to further the cause of justice, it is important to remember that the fight for gender equality is an integral part of that greater struggle. And we chose the topic of our symposium today to help to remind us of that truth. Of course, one day cannot adequately address the intersecting justice and equality issues that affect women and their lives. They range from the gendered nature of poverty to attacks on reproductive justice to the silencing of women of color's voices in discussions of mainstream feminism. But in this one day that we do have here, we hope to inspire you to return to the continuing work of seeking justice for all women and for all of us. We hope that you will start that work here with us today by engaging in much needed collaboration through our panel question and answer sessions at our lunchtime roundtables, and of course in hallway discussions where so much of this work always occurs. Thank you all for joining us today and thank you for your commitment to justice. It is now my pleasure to introduce the leader of our law school, Dean Michael Fitz. His commitment to Penn Law, to, inter to innovation, to interdisciplinary approaches, and to collegiality and collaboration has transformed our school. It is with great pleasure that we congratulate him on his latest accomplishment, being named the 15th president of Tulane University. Congratulations, Dean Fitz, and thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Emily, and, and thanks all of you. Um, it, it, it is really a pleasure and a delight to be able to, to welcome uh, the SPARE Symposium, uh, not only for what the, the issues that it's confronting today, um, social uh, and gender inequality, which are, are clearly one of the most uh, important issues our society faces, um, but it also gives me an opportunity to say a few words about this community, um, and Ed Spare and how this community has changed um, over the last 30 years. Um, uh, obviously, as somebody who's completing their third term uh, here at Penn Law School, I get to, th to step back and talk a little bit about how the community has changed. And I think um, that Ed Spare, um, some of you who may have known uh, well, um, would be on one level absolutely delighted and excited to see what's going on here, um, both at Penn Law in the world um, at large, but it, on another level, uh, not obviously uh, deeply discouraged because he, he was here at, as a faculty member at Penn Law in the early 1980s, and I think it's safe to say he was um, the first of a generation, clearly the first public interest lawyer on uh, a major law school faculty and a forerunner in his field. Um, and with his premature death in the early 80s, the Sparrow Symposium was named after him. Now, it had um, nothing really to, um, in terms of its depth and breadth um, as it is today. Um, it was a smallish type symposium with an idea and a vision. Um, and it's, a, it's really extraordinary to see how that vision has grown and captured all of Penn Law School in the, in the next 30 years. Um, it was in 1989, a few years later, that Penn Law School was the first um, school to adopt a public service requirement. And I can say, I don't think anybody at the time quite understood um, the impact that would have on the institution. It was revolutionary among law schools at the time. 
Um, and it has since grown to uh, the Toll Public Interest Center, which is an extraordinary institution um, that uh, flows um, not only around the law school and the city and the world, um, supporting uh, really tens of thousands of service and so many student po um, projects, um, I can't begin to recount all the individual uh, different items. Um, and after that, I could go through all the individual pieces of what are the public interest community here. There are um, spare fellows and, and support for students over the summer, 150 of which are performing public service. There's a loan forgiveness program that really is uh, the envy of all of our peers and is supported so wonderfully by um, our alumni. And postgraduate fellowships that have really intended to support students going on uh, into public service. I could talk about all the individual things, but the point I really want to make is the, the parts are huge, but it's the sum of those parts together that I think are so important because they, they create the, the DNA of, of Penn Law School, its commitment uh, to the community around it. And you can see all of these effects uh, in the people here, uh, in the institution, in the fabric uh, of Penn Law School. Um, and let me just point in terms of the Spare Symposium, I, I know Ed Spare himself would just be delighted, um, not a, especially by the student initiative um, that it's part of it and all the different uh, Toll scholars who've taken this over um, uh, the symposium and initiated it. And needless to say, he, Ed himself would be stunned to know that we They've already published uh, the edition of the symposium. But I want to make a, a, a brief shout out to all of the individual uh, Toll scholars who've been involved in this. Um, obviously, Emily Turner, and um, I, I believe they are all in the room at this moment, but I wonder if they could uh, just raise their hand. Uh, George Donnelly, uh, Chelsea uh, um, Edwards, okay, um, <laughs> Catherine Schulman. Uh, Whitney Veets um, and uh, David Washington as well. Anyway, um, I, 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 I want to thank all of you here and, and probably outside taking name tags for, for all that you've done uh, for this symposium. Um, as Emily mentioned, I'm going off to uh, serve as president of Tulane University. And I think it's, it's important to note that sort of the connection between Penn and Tulane. Tulane is, I think, the first university to mandate public service as part of um, its educational re requirement as a university and obviously is deeply involved in New Orleans. Um, the point is that um, Ed Spare, both here and as part of a movement around the country, created a, a public service culture uh, and commitment uh, that continues to this day. And I think he would be, as I said, incredibly um, proud of this conference uh, and all of the uh, people who've been part of it and the public interest commitment that's been produced um, since he uh, taught here in, in the, uh, at uh, Penn Law School. Um, he would also be uh, recognized probably more than anybody that the causes and issues that he held dear um, in terms of social inequality um, as well as gender inequality um, have clearly not been solved since he was working on them uh, 80, uh, 30 some years ago today, but clearly they are something uh, that the people in this room and the students in this room uh, will be confronting uh, and hoping help to alleviate in years to come. So in any event, I want to thank uh, all of you for participating in this conference. It really is a wonderful testament to the energy of the students here uh, and the Toll Center. So welcome, have a wonderful day, and I will turn it back to Emily Turner. Thank you all.